Hi everyone, this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Stories of the Supernatural. If you're watching it on the internet or listening to a podcast version of the show, make sure to subscribe so that you get notified when a new show is released. And if you'd like to find links to videos or MP3 files, just go to MiamiGhostChronicles.com and you can also submit any eerie experiences you've had at the Submit Your Story tab. Also, hook up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram where you can find information not only about new shows, but also about monthly free merchandise giveaways. So, get comfortable, enjoy this new episode, and just imagine it's a dark and stormy night where not a creature is stirring, not even a mouse. And if a creature is stirring, you hope it's a mouse. Hi everybody, it's Marley with Miami Ghost Chronicles, Stories of the Supernatural. How is everybody doing tonight? Good, I hope. Well, you know, we're in my favorite month, which is October. Of course, October. Besides being uh, my birthday month, it's Halloween. And even though it's <laughs> we don't really get autumn in Florida, South Florida especially, but still, the weather cools off just a little bit. But anyway, um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the guests that I have tonight. And I know you guys are going to be super excited. Her name is Jen DeVillier. She's an author. She's a psychic medium. She's a spiritual guide and lecturer. And she has a lifetime of experience with the paranormal, which you know you all know that that's one of my questions. And she's she, we, up front, we got it. She had an experience with a shadow figure when she was eight years old. And, you know, we're going to ask her about that. Um... Since then, her life has been full of developing her abilities, helping those in need, both dead and alive. Uh, her life has helped educate and guide people to be the spiritual beings they were meant to be. And she also helps people find their way if they are lost in this thing called life. Her book is titled Dark Night Haunting, which is her paranormal autobiography. And she wrote that to reach out to others that are like her and, of course, can relate. And in uh, her day job, she does uh, astrology readings, tarot card readings, scarabs, numerology, angel oracle, and fairy oracles. She can be reached uh, via email or at her sister site, which I love, by the way, Jen, this website address, badassastrology.com. <laughs> How are you doing today, Jen? I'm doing great. How about you? Fantastic. Great. Anyway, I, I love... <laughs> I love your the title of your of your uh, your website address your domain that's <laughs> badass astrology. But anyway, let's that actually is not my personal website. That is, and, and I did together for okay. uh, the purpose of helping people doing readings like astrology, tarot. Okay. My actual website is jendevillier.com. Okay. And anyway, I'm going to have that on the credits of the show. But let me ask you, if somebody wanted to get a reading from you, though, would they go to that one, to Badass Astrology, or should they just go to Jen DeVillier? Actually, the Badass Astrology, I'm not even sure that that's active anymore. Okay. Um, All right. My, my business partner kind of went to do her own thing, and um, I'm not sure she's keeping it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Either way, though, you do have an active website address, which is your name. Yes. Okay. All right. Not a problem. Not a problem. But anyway, like I said, you made mention already in your bio up front that you had your first run-in when you were eight years old with a shadow person. Can you tell us about that? What happened with that? Yeah. Um, I've always been kind of a strange child, I guess. Um, <laughs> I've always been that. into... Um, <laughs> I've always been into horror movies. Okay. Here, so, um, but here I was one night at home. Uh, I think I was making a Ouija board or something like that, probably. Okay. Um, but I hadn't actually done anything with it yet. I was just making one because I used to make them with Manila folders, paper, or whatever I could find. Okay. Um, and basically I just felt this really, uh, unnerving feeling and I look into the hallway and like shape of a man 
and it was uh yeah I, I couldn't see through him he was blocking out the light wow. um and and instead of being fearful of what it was i was more fearful of what is it doing in the house Right. So it was kind of a, Let me ask you: Would you, when you saw it, did you immediately, did you think it was a real person, or did you realize this is not, this is a supernatural being? I'm not sure that my brain was making that connection <laughs> just yet. Okay. Um, I know. Because I, I end up turning away out of that fear, and I just sort of turn my head back forward, mm-hmm. and you know, kind of froze a little bit. And then I heard keys in the front door, my mom coming home, and I looked back in the hallway, and the light's back. And so I think it was at probably at that point that I was like, okay, what in the heck was that? <laughs> right, right. And, and and I know sometimes, you know, when you're there in that moment and things are going along, sometimes it takes a bit for you to, you know, in other words, it's going along too fast and you're just taking it in as best you can which is with no right. was that a real person that wasn't a real person and then and of course you're a kid after all everything when all is said and done you were a child uh and did did you continue with your Ouija board uh experiments making making the Ouija boards after that oh yeah I, <laughs> I've been making those things pretty much all my life um I still do I haven't here in the last couple of years because I've been too busy with other things but um yeah, I do. When I have time, I do. I make them and um, I sell them. People want to buy them. Okay. And a few of them too. And I always bless them before I send them on their way because I figure what they're going to do is their own intent. Right. Intention I'm putting out there when I sell it or give it away is I'm doing it with a good intention. Right. So in other words, you you really, turn it over to them protection. like a blank slate, like cleansed. In other words, is what you're saying. You're yes. not like, hey, it's whatever yeah. you do after that. It's you know, tabula rasa. This is a clean slate. I uh, hope you do the right thing, but it's up to you. Oh. Right, exactly. And were you doing the the Ouija board just by yourself? Or did you have any other friend, or how would you do it, like a solo thing? Um. <laughs> I usually did it by myself, yeah. Like I said, I was kind of a strange kid, so... Um, You're a brave kid. You know, there's a lot of kids that... I didn't have very many friends over. You know, there's a lot of kids that try that, and after seeing what... Even if they're not sure what it was, they would have said, that's it, put this stuff away. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> so, did anything ever happen to you later on as you were growing up, adolescence, teenage years? Um, Not anything that was particularly the experiences with the dead pretty much all my life okay. um and you know it started with the shadow figure but i mean the way i grew up you know my mom used to go and get tarot card readings a lot okay and i would go with her and so i kind of got into the whole thing by going into those bookstores and you know looking around at books and the cards and all that okay so in other reading. words you, you um, you're so, right you grew up like your mom was doing it, so you, you kind of felt. That, had, did your mom ever have any experiences on her own, or what, or were you just like the little psychic girl in the house that had these experiences? Well, she did when I was younger, but she was in denial about oh, it. Okay, yeah, I understand. Um, she she's not now. She's not in denial anymore. Now, as a grown up, um, she's had so much happen that okay. now, her that it is happening, and she accepts it. So basically, I accepted it long before she did. Right. Yeah. And it's surprising sometimes Um, the adults think that that they're helping the kid out by, like, keeping a lid on it and not really. Yeah. Uh, Well, for her, she she would always try to explain it away, like it had some reasonable explanation. Um, You know, like the one that sticks out to me the most is as a teenager, uh, we lived in a duplex. And I knew that there was already something in there because, well, I felt it. Okay. Um, things telepathically that it would show me. <clears throat> and I, I didn't really say anything to mom about it. All right. But there was one time I was in my room and listening to music with headphones on. 
Next thing you know, my mom's opening my door and she's like, why were you doing that? And I'm like, doing what? And she's like, I was trying to my bedroom. I'm like, mom, I've been in here the whole time with my headphones on. What are you talking about? Oh. <laughs> and so she just, you know, she chalked it up to something else, you know, but it was like, there's no other explanation for that. You heard what you heard. Right. But now when she hears those things, she knows. And, you know, but still she calls me in excitement and yeah, tells me what's going on where she lives now. And <laughs> so. so, in other words, it almost sounds like it's not necessary that you needed to have moved into a place that was had was haunted or had spirit activity. It sounds like maybe because you and your mom are sensitive, things also are drawn to you guys. Yeah, I, I'm sure that played a role in it. Um, in places that were haunted, but I didn't know until after the fact. But well, yeah, a lot of the time, I think it's passer people passing through. Okay, um, that would explain activity that doesn't stick around. You know, when people have some activity, they say, "Well, I was right." But it's gone quiet now. You know, um, a lot of times that's what it is. They're just passing through. Okay, they want to see what's going on, and then they go away. But I mean, because sure. to be honest, if we, you know, we're in spirit form, we can go anywhere we want. So right. why wouldn't you? Right. And a lot of people don't realize that there's a good portion of discarnates which are not bound to a property. Everybody thinks of, you know, you got to go to the haunted house or the haunted place to run into mm -hmm. them. And it's that's not doesn't always apply. A lot of times it doesn't right. apply. Uh, and right. I mean, because I can get information from watching a television Okay. Investigating, and I'll I'll pick up on stuff before they even say anything. <laughs> like, right, which is good because sometimes you, you can know, validate, it. especially if they do a reveal later right. on. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's always fun for me. That's why I like to watch them because I'm like, oh, well, that, that's pretty cool. That's exactly what I just. So, in, in other words, it sounds like you really didn't need the Ouija board. You were being able to pick up information or impressions, <laughs> or did you did. After time, did you ever use something more than others, any other type of instrument or something that was going to help you get information, or is it just like you open yourself up? Well, I think for me what it was is um, I, I more or less use it to talk to my spirit guides Okay. instead of to ghosts. In fact, the only time I use it to talk to ghosts is if I go on location and somebody wants me to bring a board. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. That's very smart. But otherwise, when I use them, it's to talk to my spirit guides. And, of course, the next question is always, how do you know it's your spirit guides and not something else? Well, right. my spirit guides have always talked to me in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And so, answers that don't sound like the person that you're used to talking to. Right. You, you know, you start catching it and you're like, wait a minute, you're not so-and-so. Okay. And you cut it off. So, uh, normally it's my one spirit guide, and he talks to me in the exact same way every time I right. talk to him. So I know. Let me ask you, Jen, do you, would you how, recommend, um, let's say, somebody that's a psychic or developing their psychic abilities, would you recommend they do it, let's say, try to contact their guide on their own or should they go to somebody like you to help them like make sure they can make the right connection now in my years of experience I, I really wish I would have taken the route of doing things like meditation Okay. because there's plenty of meditations out there where uh, into the recesses of your own mind and be able to contact your guide that way Right, and, and, and I, I guess the reason why I ask is what you mentioned earlier, that for somebody that really mm -hmm. doesn't have experience there, that you could have an entity, you know, of course, identifying as your guide, and of course, that, you know, everybody, especially somebody that's trying to reach out to their guide, where they might give permission and get involved, and this is not really their guide. Right. Um, that's That's... And anybody else using a Ouija board for that purpose of contacting their spirit guide, unless they know for certain mm -hmm. 
how their spirit guide talks because if they have no experience, they don't know how their spirit guide talks, then they're not going to know who they're talking to exactly. and they might be prone to believe whatever they're told. They could also get suckered into doing things they shouldn't do. Exactly. Um, I mean, there's a variety of things that could come from that. Um, I always see the board as a tool, but again, that's my intention is a tool. Okay. Uh, other people's intentions are different. There are some people that want to reach out to the dead, reach out to specific dead, like in a haunted place or something okay. like that. Um, then you don't know what the heck they're doing, don't know what they're calling, yes. and have no idea. Yeah. Use it, and, you know, who knows what's going to come through. So Sure. Did you ever have something like that happen to you before you got really experienced at it, where something that, that, that didn't anything look that threatening was... or that, you know, that kind of introduced? Because I've, and the reason why I ask is I've heard stuff like this happens frequently where the initial contact is very non-threatening, very, you know, for lack of a better word, docile, mm -hmm. and then it gets ugly. Right. Um never had that type of experience okay um but again usually my intention is something different but when i was younger and you know less experienced and using a board with a friend of mine or something like that like i can tell you in my early 20s okay uh, i can remember using one with uh friends of mine and there were a couple guys in the other room in the kitchen and we were in the living room and these spirits that were coming through and it was spirits it wasn't my guide because i could tell by the way they were it, it was authentically from the other side okay um and they were telling us that they didn't like one of the guys that was in the kitchen which he had never been to our house before so he was new to our place okay. and uh like him and to stress the point of that, all of a sudden we hear, shh, boom, and we're like, what the heck was that? And we go into the kitchen, and the guys are standing there, like, terrified, and we're like, what happened? And it's like, that pitcher, you know, like a drink pitcher, okay. slid from the back side of the cabinet all the way to the floor on its own. Oh. And this was just after they said, we don't like him, get him out of here, stuff like that. So they really didn't want him in the house. Okay. And ironically enough, even though it wasn't my guide, they were giving a warning that this guy was bad news. Oh, so it was and, accurate, in know, other words. Okay. Yes, yes. They did not let him come back. And at the time, we were like why what's the big deal you know mm -hmm. and then like a week or two later um he had gotten into some legal trouble and got arrested and stuff there and so we were just like whoa <laughs> right yeah and, and and you know it's not the first time um, you're hanging out the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong person and you get scooped up you know into trouble that's not really yours so yeah yeah God. i mean normally i it's about people anyway but it was just weird that they went out of their way in that yes. place to tell us they were warning us to get him out of there but yeah throwing you know doing that with the pitcher it, it scared them okay. <laughs> so well, not, i don't blame them they must have been like what i don't come back <laughs> right well yeah but, and, and this you know is that the person the that other some... person learned to trust me after that so <laughs> and you know sometimes in those cases yeah it was trying to give a warning maybe it was one of the other somebody else's guy that stepped in and said hey ditch that guy quick well it it could have been but also in that place we did experience a lot of activity oh, really? so um yeah there there i have no no doubt that that place is actually haunted. Wow. There, there was a lot of activity quite frequently like really scary i think the scariest thing that ever happened was being awakened by a really deep voice that sounded like it was talking backwards oh 
and it was coming from like the ceiling area and there was nobody above us so it was kind of like and that'll bring uh, you awake okay real quick. you know but i'm <laughs> i'm so used to these things that i'm just like uh oh whatever <laughs> but <laughs> you know that backwards talking thing will kind of like like it's like what and yeah, did you guys yeah, did you guys sure. ever have a chance to identify who the entities were or what no, was there? No. Okay. No, they were because back, back then I I really wasn't using my medium skills and okay. I didn't know what I was doing. Um that was my early 20s. I really had no idea what I was doing. I was still a kid, still doing oh, well, you know and um <laughs> so let me well and let me ask something are you a medium because a lot of people don't understand there's psychic and there's mediums do you channel or or um i i do but not in the way that i allow them to come into my body i don't okay. allow that all right boundary that i don't want breached so okay. it's pretty much when i want information from them i talk to them telepathically and they answer telepathically okay Okay. They answer, or they'll show me what looks like a movie mm -hmm. of you know. Yes. They look like back then, what their age might have been, um, things like that. It's all telepathic, though. So what? When was it that you decided to, like you said, you, you know, when you're young and you go hang out with your friends and it sounds like something fun to do, even though you grew up, you know, your mom was getting tarot readings. At what point did you? start to solidly become interested in it and for lack of a better word control it more develop it more um that would have been i would say probably about my mid-30s okay after having been through a ton of experiences I think I finally just started saying, you know what, I'm just going to embrace this. Um, right. I've been in it all my life anyway. I might as well. Okay. And, um, you know, I've been reading tarot cards since, gosh, I, I want to say 1993. Um, wow. Because it was definitely after I graduated high school. And I had the tarot cards, like I said, from my mom. But also I kept friending people around me. Thing. So it all sort of went hand in hand. Um, okay. But yeah, I didn't start embracing it until, yeah, I would say 30s or so. And I've been working, it's still like a lifelong process. Sure. You still have to fine tune it. And of course, those things where if you, you don't use it, you do start to lose it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you have to work at getting it back. So. Yeah, I mean, there's been times where I've, you know, felt like I've kind of lost it and then had to All right, work at go. it and get it back. Anyway, <clears throat> Jen, I was going to ask you, and the reason why I ask is that I know a lot of people that, like yourself, that start off very young, they have an experience, um, and they 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 kind of. Try to tamp it down because they're afraid sometimes of what they see. What I call the Cassandra effect, or sometimes <clears throat> they have like I don't want to I want I don't want to say negative experiences, but some of the stuff that they see is negative almost because of the emotion attached to it. Did that ever happen to you? Um, I can't really say that it has. I mean. Gosh, the the only really negative experience I really had was when uh, I lived in a historical home in Pensacola, Florida. Okay. I mean, that place was just nuts. I'd never experienced all of that in one place. And um, I did you attached to the house. Okay. Like um, something maybe had happened. But again, I was in my 20s and... I didn't know what to do about it. I didn't know how to look into it. Um, I was just basically trying to survive through it, basically. Yep. I mean, not, there was nothing ever physical, but it scary. Well, if you're sensitive, you can pick up on stuff that, like you said, it, it's, it can be very daunting. But And really what I want to know, did you ever do readings? Because, you know, where what you saw or coming up for that person was like 
you know, not the usual, like, oh, you know, you're going to break up with your boyfriend or something like that, where something um, drastic happened and it came to pass? Well, um, I have on occasion seen death okay. on people. can look at them and tell that they don't have much time left. Like, I can okay. see how sick they are and everybody around them doesn't notice. Okay. Yes, um, I, that I know did happen with the ex father in law. Um, okay. I could, uh, and it and his ex wife had had me do a reading, and that did come up. Oh wow! And she, oh no, he's doing much better in this and that. He's you know he's been doing great, and I'm just like okay. <laughs> and then and then he passes. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, Am I the only one not shocked? But you know, right? Um, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, things like that have have happened on occasion. Well, thankfully, it doesn't happen too often because right. I, I really don't like. I mean, there are still times where I can look at somebody and tell how terribly ill they are. Okay. You know, including and, themselves. And people don't realize that sometimes it. You know, when you do get something about somebody, it, it you. You know, I imagine as as a psychic, depending on what it is, it's like, how much do I really want to tell this person? You know, I, you know, right? Do I? Yeah, want that's something like... I don't do when I when I do tarot readings and things like that. I typically won't. If I do see death, I won't say anything because it's kind of a it's kind of a moral dilemma. I mean, you right, don't really exactly exactly. You don't want to say, you know, so cells and that comes up. I'll say something like you're about to go through a huge transition, but you'll be in a much better place. Right. Okay. And le let me ask you, do you, have you ever, when you do the readings for somebody, do you think, are these just possibilities or is, or are there certain things that you say, you know what, this is going to happen no matter what, this is going to happen to this person? Well, um, I, most of the time it's subjective information. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is a rare occasion that it is just straight on. Okay. Okay. And the card, as far as the cards go, for me, they're just stepping stones anyway. Um, okay. Because my ability kind of ties together the story and I can put it all together. And there, there are some things that I see that I'm just like, it's not right for me. Um, right. <laughs> so well, not I won't. Well, and you know because, what? You know, you get those warnings from guides that are like, you can't tell them that because if you do, they're going to make a different choice, and it's exactly, going to be really bad for them. Exactly. So don't, like don't you're do thinking that. to yourself, is this person then going to act out? I might because there's, the, you know, the suggestibility. Let's say you understand what I'm saying. Like, if yeah, in other words, if something is their destiny or something that there's, you know, how much of this? I guess depending on how serious it is. Or am I going to torture this person into actually, you know, bef before it happens or that they think it's inevitable? So I totally understand where you're coming from as far as, you know, it's different, I guess, to tell somebody you're going to break up with your significant other versus something much more serious, in other words. Right, right. And I, I mean, sometimes that's the night, you know. Sometimes if I read the person, you know, it's one of those things where you know that it, it was, they're not going to believe you anyway. You're right. Exactly. Um, so <laughs> well, you're just sort of like, hmm, uh, how do I put this delicate? Yeah. yeah and, and, and I imagine also, um, do you... Uh, what do people usually come to you for readings? Like, is it usually about love? Is it about jobs? But what is what is the main thing that when people come to you and ask for a reading, what's usually what is it that they're they're looking for? What information? Um, it, it seems like the clientele I get now is mm -hmm. usually they're usually after what's going to be happening in their life, like a right. general. You know, am I heading in the right direction? Okay doing what I'm supposed to be doing um, is there love in the future uh, okay. you know, things like that um, okay. I tend to 
not want to do very many readings for people who are looking for fortune teller types of answers because right. I don't believe that life and I feel like you generate the energy that you want in your life and so for me the energy I try to generate are clients that are looking for glee so so the clients that I do get are seeking more guidance than they are is this guy gonna break up with me or is this yeah, guy cheating on me exactly. and stuff like that you know in other Which words you're I just doing something them, and they want to make sure they're on the they're they're going in the right direction or or something like that am I am I making the right decision with this career uh, or okay. should I be heading in another direction with you know that type of thing exactly exactly and and the reason why I ask is that I'm thinking to myself, and I'm going to go back to, and, and the reason why I brought it up is I'm thinking this has got to be one of those things that, you know, that you get the question about is like, oh, um, you know, some, they want to be with somebody and maybe that person doesn't, it's, you know, they're they're broken up or something and, mm -hmm. you know, they don't want to see what's in front of them. In other words, they already kind of know the answer and they're coming maybe to somebody like you hoping you're going to tell them no. And it's, I'm thinking to myself, at some point, she, I wonder if she's going to tell them forget about it you know you know like this is not you're not meant to be with this person when what they really want to hear is the contrary to what kind of what they already know especially when somebody's not cooperating in the you know with the love affair thing um because i imagine that I, there's got to be a lot of people out there that you know they they want to be with somebody else and no matter what and they're yeah yep yes um, and I have done plenty of those types of readings where they are insistent on being with someone in particular. And usually that guy or he'll have a girlfriend or, you know, and they want to know when he's going to leave that person for them. And it's right. like he's not going to. And if he did, he's going to do it to you then later on. So your best thing is to just let go. Right. But in other words, they don't know, you know. Yeah, they, 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 they don't want to hear uh, that. And it's it's unfortunate because I think a lot of people sometimes kind of waste their time because they they could be with somebody else that they could have a better actually have a relationship with, but they kind of hang up to yeah. that whatever it was that happened or well, almost they happened. Close themselves off, believing that that's the one person, and what they sure. fail to understand is that everything resides around free will and choice, and. Mm -hmm. If that person, it doesn't mean, you know, if that person was originally meant, who could have chosen want to, and that's just the way it is. <laughs> you can't change somebody's decision. Exactly right. You can't coerce, especially when it comes to, you know, emotions. Do you do any readings for people as far as reincarnation or people wanting to know who I was or if me and that person, did we ever share a prior lifetime? Do you do anything like that? Um, I haven't gotten any that believes that they've been with somebody in the, in the past or anything like that. But I have had people come to me for astrology information. Okay. And they might ask um, what type of person in the past life rather than who was I, you know. Okay. Um, because I wouldn't have specific information on that anyway. But I can, I do have the ability to look at the, somebody's chart and be able to tell what type of person they probably have been in the past. Okay. Um, wow. That that usually ties to somebody's, um, or in some people call it true node. Okay. So if you know what that sign is, then you would be able to tell what, what type of past lives they probably had and what type of why they're now doing this life, how it ties together. Wow. That sounds let, so. Let me ask you: If somebody wanted to have their chart done, you could do their chart for them. I imagine with uh, all that information, mm -hmm. or I mean, in other words, yeah, more than yeah. your sun sign is in this, you know, and that's it's a very generic kind of. Much thing. more, yeah. There's so much more information located in in somebody's birth chart. It's it's really unbelievable how much information you can get about someone just through the chart. Wow. But that thing about the I, I life, once had really a lady I once had a lady that um a lot of physical and mental problems mm -hmm. 
And she came to me and asked me, why am I like this? Why can you tell me in my chart why I'm like this? And I, I'm not kidding. I actually pulled up her chart and I looked in her chart and I saw exactly why she is more prone to the illnesses that she has and I explained it to her and she was completely floored. Wow. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, our charts determine a lot about who we are, what we're prone to, things we need to work on, things we need to let go of. I mean, there's just, I mean, and I, I call myself a newbie in the the astrology field because I've only been doing it for three years now or so. Okay. And, uh, you know, so I'm still to it, but, um, people that start talking about that example that you just gave where she had all these things going on in her present life and you look, mm-hmm. do you see, is there anything like as a karmic, and by this I don't mean like karmic like as in punishment, I don't want to use it that way. I'm saying like where you're trying to get right what you didn't get right before. You know, it probably could, I'm, I'm sure it probably is in there. I'm not sure. Um, I would imagine that something like that would be in some of the secrets are. That's where all the hidden information, knowledge, okay. um, karmic lessons, all that stuff is in the 12th house. And so okay. you have to look at what planets might have been there when they were born. Okay. Um, like if you have Neptune, and you could be somebody that could be very delusional or uh, be prone to have mental illnesses that make you bipolar or make you, um, I mean, just a series of all types of mental illnesses. You, you wow. could be, well, I mean, but you could also be a brilliant psychic. I mean, so it can kind of yeah. go either way. Yeah, because I mean, you we, have to really like look at all the varying things in that person's chart to be able to tell which direction they're they're most likely to take, and which how if they're going to end up being is it something they can get past things like that. Right, because for you to do a complete chart, you you need the person's not only their birthday but the time they were born, right? Yes, the exact time and the location, because um, right. otherwise. Otherwise, you're looking at just a basic skeleton, okay. and um, you know, without that information. Right, or, because I know, imagine I you need, need to look at what's happening. With, and I'm like, like the whole chart, like yeah, there, yeah, because well, I mean, because people will give me, I don't know what the exact time is. Yeah. Information. I'm just like, well, I'll put it to you this way: I can't give you exact information without exact data. Exactly, right. That you need, you need, <laughs> right. And I know what you're saying, like, to because I imagine it can vary depending on the time of birth, is what you're saying. Absolutely. I mean, even a few minutes can can change things. Right. Um, and surprisingly, the location has something to do with it as well. So, I mean, it it all ties together. Right. Because I imagine it's also depending on what time what time it was where they were at when they were born, and is what you're saying. Right. Okay. Right, because different time zones, exactly. So, mm-hmm. it depends where where what place of birth you were at, what the time zone was at that point. Wow. Exactly. And yeah. Yeah. I I know. I and the thing is, I think newer birth certificates have the time, but I think older birth certificates they don't have time. They would just have like a birth date, and that was it. Right. Um, And so for things like that, because I had to do this for myself, um, Mm -hmm. I had a copy of my birth certificate, but I had to actually get the gift for my mom. And that's the one that actually has time on it, the gift one. Right. So you you would have to order a copy of, of that one, and that one has the time. It has a time exact because of the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because of, the, you know, as far as mm-hmm. vital statistics and things like that. Now I think the newer, newer ones, they, they just automatically bring it all on there no matter what. And yeah, when people, um, when people come to you and let's say 
they let's say they want to have their chart drawn up and they've got everything they've got the birthday they've got the time they've got everything and i imagine mm-hmm. you know of course it's going to show up to the point where they're at um how do they use it mostly is it to plan out what's going to happen for them is it do people come to you for different reasons life in general business because there's a lot of people that are driven by business money or can, mm-hmm. i mean it looks at all aspects in other words of that person's life Right. Um, that, that's, you know, people have different different goals in mind mm-hmm. as far as what they want me to look at. Um, okay. The basic of who they are, which is easy enough. I can run a report and it right. will give you all the basics of who you are. Um, when they ask me something very specific, that's when I have to go kind of dig in deep. Okay. Um, like how... Yes. Um, and Jen, do you ever get people who I ask can, you like, what? Let's say you do again the chart for them, and they ask you, what's the good? Mm-hmm. Is there a good time to do this? And I'm, again, I'm going to go with a business, or if they're a business person, do you? Can you tell them, mm-hmm. hey, th- this is a better time, or you know, now's do it now, or wait till next year, or anything like that? Does if doing somebody's well, personal the, chart. The, the uh, the easiest way to actually do that, okay, um, that I like to use is the moon cycle. Oh, okay. Okay. Like if they're asking about a specific month or a specific date that they're planning, mm-hmm. is that going to be an ideal time for me to do that? And I can look to see what the moon cycle is going to be at that point. Is it going to be full? Is it half? what sign is it in stuff like that and then i would be able to tell them okay that's going to be a perfect time for you to do that or okay. maybe you should hold off until this time but then i also have to take into consideration what planets are in retrograde at the time too okay yeah so it's there's more to it than just and where is that affecting and where is the retrograde affecting their chart where is it in their chart right because yeah, if it's, it's affecting business thing. You know what I mean? Like if, if Mars or Mercury are in retrograde and they happen to be in their second house of finances, mm-hmm. it'd be a good time for them to do anything. They may need to wait until it goes direct. Exactly. So, I mean, there's a whole lot of things that come into play when you're right, right. looking at things like that. It sounds like what you're saying is that everybody can be affected differently depending on what your chart has on it. I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, right. absolutely. And people right. try to go by just their sun signs, but it's actually a bit deeper. Yeah, like I know. for example, everybody... Venus Venus re- re- recently went into retrograde. And for me, Venus is in my second house of personal finances, mm-hmm. but it's also then going to go further back to my first house of self. So <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride. Um, so, but you know, it's going to be different for everybody according exactly. to where those signs are. Right, and you at least have a heads up, in other words. So that that's good because it kind of, like you said, some things are inevitable; they're going to happen no matter mm-hmm. what. But if you're prepared or you know what's coming, it's like, okay, you know what? Let me just lay low or whatever it is that you got to do or not do until this passes. Some people, t- I yeah, imagine yeah, that they basically. have no idea. They're like, "What is going on?" Do, have you like, That's have you um, how, how that works? Have you ever designed your own uh, cards, or do you just use a standard um, tarot cards and things like that? Not design mine yet, mm-hmm. but because uh, <laughs> it's finding the time that seems yes, to be the I problem know. for me for uh, most things. Um, you know, I do work for a client. Okay. Great amount of work for it. And, and then I'm also doing my own work on the side of that for my personal clients. Um, so it just seems like trying to squeeze in everything else is just... Sure. It no, and I know it's got to require a lot of creativity, you know, as far as... Um, um, to come up with a complete, you know, all the, you know, besides the idea and then creating it, I guess. Is, 
you know, as yeah. far as... Because yeah. you sound like you're a very creative person, and I'm thinking, man, she could probably... She has a, probably a lot of great ideas as far as... Because I know, I've seen that there's a bunch of these, uh, I guess what they call different tarot cards and or, or oracle cards, stuff uh-huh. like that. And yeah. I guess it depends on your interpretation of whatever it is that you see as far as symbols in your head. Have you gotten to... And, and it almost sounds like... Do you, I'm wondering if you ever need even need tarot cards, to be honest with you. You sound like you could probably... <laughs> do it without cards yeah some, sometimes I don't really need it but um, uh-huh. uh, sometimes I can throw down cards okay I what what is crossing my mind to make mm-hmm. sure that I'm on point and not spacing out picking up other information that doesn't belong okay. um, so when I when I do a tarot reading for somebody I am legitimately using the cards uh, usually I'll take a photo I normally do it via email, and I'll take a photo of the layout, and I explain what each card means, and then go for an overall, you know, what they can look forward to, or what it is they need to work on, or, you know, whatever it is that really... Right, because I imagine when when people, let's say, when they, when they ask to have a tarot reading, I imagine mm-hmm. that, unless they get very... Gen- uh, like a general question. In other words, you can you can read to them for what for everything, or it's got to be more specific because it's like how many things can you know? Can I tell you about, or do they need to be more specific as to what what they want to know? Well, see, and I use different um, I use different layouts and everything oh, too. Okay, so okay. I'll have like a financial layout or a love layout. I see. Um, I'll have like a six card layout which just it just answers one question I can do a general reading or an overlook if they want to know what's you know basically they want kind of a heads up what's coming my way type of deal okay um if they want to know something more specific then yeah they're going to have to be more specific than what they're asking me um I typically don't want a bunch of background information okay, yeah, on someone when they, yeah, because it to me it's like you're already telling me to whatever I see. It may not make you know. It may too be too easy to just be like, oh, right, well, right. maybe you're I like, was just yeah, influenced just, by just what tell, I just read. Point me and and I'll take it from there. Uh, right. So usually I'm like, just you know, you don't need to be. T- kind of ask me of basically what it is that you you feel like you need to know and so if they're talking about a relationship or what they're very brief and I ha- don't have any information on it so it's good I lay it out and I tell them what I see and they usually end up coming back to me if you knew all that and I'm like I didn't <laughs> right exactly I'm just the vessel you know the information came through and I'm just the vessel so I'm, I'm glad that you know, it worked out, or I'm exactly. glad that it helped. You know that sure, I didn't really know all of that. Sometimes people need a nudge in the right direction, especially like when they're at a crossroads that they're like, "This way or that way, what do I do?" Right, right. And what inspired you to write your book, The Dark Night Haunting? Well, I think what it was was that. Surprisingly, a great number of people that are afraid to discuss experience themselves. Okay. Uh, that their, you know, neighbors or friends are going to think they're weird or something's wrong with them. Maybe. Or, you know, and I, I kind of wanted people to understand that these things do happen and you're not a weirdo. You're not <laughs> mentally unstable. This. Yeah, and you know what? That you know, and so a lot of people don't realize that just, just because there's a lot of reality TV shows and it looks like people are, you know, are into it. I imagine there's still a lot of people out there that <laughs> want to keep it. It's like I don't want anybody to know that I had this experience or that I see ghosts or that whatever. It's like it almost has mm-hmm. like a stigma attached to it. Yeah, there, uh, there's a lot that it's going to get broadcast and then everybody in their town's going to know about it and you know I mean it's 
I, I just basically want people to know it's okay. You know, we experience these things. It's actually pretty normal rather than okay. it is paranormal. Um, well, it's, you know, what's scary to you some is, is nothing to me. It's like, it's a daily occurrence. I don't, I don't understand how people would be afraid, but I mean, well, you know, like the house I live in right now is, you know, there, you hear footsteps and stuff really? all the time, but I mean, it was built in the 1800s. <laughs> okay. There you go. It's going to have activity. It's going to have residual. It's right. going to have, yeah. I mean, that's basically what it is, is residual and mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how much I burn sage. It's not going to go away because yeah. it's residual. Exactly. It's just an imprint. If it's not evil, it's just there. Do you have so any other activity no. or anything else going on there, considering how much life has been lived there? <laughs> because like you said, if it was built in the 1800s. Well, I mean, you know, it's, and these are the only about so far. Um, we've only been here since July. Oh, okay. You haven't been here long. Um, yeah, it it hasn't hit any pinnacle or anything. But, I mean, we, we hear footsteps and things like that when there's nobody else in the building here. Um, okay. There's three. Um, we're on the main floor. And so when you hear walking on the main floor, you know it's not people upstairs, especially if their cars aren't here. <laughs> right. So okay. You're like, oh, okay. But from what I've gathered, um, one is an old He's just sort of stuck in a time loop. I don't okay. know. He's looking for somebody or waiting for somebody. He's constantly pacing um, and looking out the windows. Yeah, and people don't realize that, so that's, that repetitive a lot. So what was it? It used to be a, 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 a big house at one point when it was originally built, and then it was divvied up into smaller. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it was until more recent times that it got turned into an apartment mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. building. Before it was, it was a, you know, back in the day, it was a big, huge, lavish home. Exactly. And um, they had to have been wealthy to have built it because, oh, yeah. I mean, lighting doors and things like that. I mean, it's woodwork everywhere. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, um, that that costs a lot of money to build the house with all that stuff. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of a smaller version of um, Hill House. Oh wow! <laughs> it, yeah, it kind of, you know, it had kind of has that feel to it. Mm -hmm. And if you're there's, um, we can see where the old stairway was. Um, our neighbors from upstairs showed us stairwell that's close off to us on both sides of the door. But one night we opened it, and we saw the stairs, and we were just like, wow, that's really neat. That's I mean, nice. just woodwork all the way up. It's like, wow. Yeah, that's the thing. Man, you paid, cool. you, you know, back then, you know, it's around these, you know, what do they call it, the Gilded Age? It was like when you had the money, you, you had that woodwork done. Some of those beautiful houses mm -hmm. I've seen is that woodwork. But, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, it, and then, like, my office, my office has a huge, it's like a, a rounded room, like a turret room. Oh, yeah. And the rounded window portion, there's a huge four, five shelf bookcase. Wow. That matches the windows that are going around. Yeah, that's all custom work. So it takes, Yeah. It's all windows and bookshelf. <laughs> so, that sounds beautiful. Yeah. And then, of course, the frame going around the room and around the doors, the windows. We've got windows. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty pretty fantastic. <laughs> so have your neighbors but, um, had experiences, the, or were you the ones that had it, and you're like, okay, we won't say anything unless they say something? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I haven't sat down to ask. Right, right. Um, one of the one of the people moved out, and um, the other couple lives in the attic apartment. So we, you know, we I haven't really opened up to them now. Okay. I had anything happen, but um, that would be one of those things that would be interesting to find. Yeah, one of these <laughs> days, maybe you know, um, when you 
you know, sometimes people got to develop like a little bit of trust, especially on their end, you know, like, what if I come out with this and I get a strange look from my neighbor? <laughs> like, what? what are you talking about? I'll be like, <laughs> uh, okay, how do I take this back? How do I walk it back? And it wouldn't be funny because you hear, funny you know, they... what they hear versus what you hear. Yeah. I mean, they have, they've been in my office. So, I mean, they see all my Ouija boards and books and okay, so then, candles okay. <laughs> and tarot cards. And I, they, I think they have a pretty good. Okay, so any day now, any minute now, they're especially if they've got a, a weird, uh, they'll 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 come bolting down there, Jen, to go. Hey, <laughs> guess what? We saw some old guy running around in our apartment. <laughs> what do we do now? You know, and it's funny because, you know, a lot of people don't realize sometimes, especially, you know. Uh, when you get somebody that's lived someplace for a long time and they get older, they do a lot of repetitive stuff. And then that's, mm-hmm. even if it's, whether it's residual or intelligent, you know, you go, how much, how, how much walking can they do? But yeah, a lot of people, this right. is how they soothe and they, in life, they were, they would just walk back and forth or pace back and forth. Yeah. Or they turn on the lights at a specific hour. Yeah, or exactly. Some people are very much into their or, schedule. I mean, yeah, yeah. People. And so when they when they cross to the other side, they do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, it like, doesn't change. Right there on that timetable. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people that, I, I want to say most humans, some more obviously than others, but everybody likes their little routine, you know, their little schedule of like, it's all, it's all good, you know, this is the time I do this and this is the time I do that. Mm-hmm. You know. Right. And so people, like you said, when they cross over, they're still on that same schedule. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. If I mean, if they stay in in this this plane, then that's what happens. Do you, if do they you, don't go to uh, Jen, do you work with any paranormal paranormal groups now, as far as investigations are concerned? Um, not currently. Uh, I used to run my own mm-hmm. many years back, um, but it wasn't working out real well for me, so I I. I um, I do occasionally have groups that will ask me to be one of their guest psychics and, and things like that. Or if a friend's having an issue, okay. they might call me up and ask me for advice or something, or what's my feel on it and things like that. So, I mean, I still get, you know, phone calls or emails and things like that. So basically and like you're a freelancer. What I think about like, it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's sometimes. Let me tell you something. I, 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 you know, sometimes that's sometimes better than being in a group in the sense that you have more flexibility uh, with your time and yeah. as far as going and, or you save the day if they're short on on you know on somebody on manpower. Right. How they have? Do you do any type? Now that you brought that up, do you do any psychometry? Do they ever call you or ask you for impressions? Let's say at, at a distance on any investigation that's being done. I have, yeah, yeah. I've I've had people that um, aren't really. I've I've had people from the cryptozoology field actually really? <laughs> be in locations and have stuff going on that they're recording a, a television like that, and they'll call and ask. Or and they'll send me a picture and and ask me what my impression is. Yeah. So, wow. um, I mean, my name doesn't get mentioned on the show or anything like that. But right, right, right. Um, they they will call and ask for information. Okay. In other words, behind the scenes, if they encounter spirits or the dead or something like that, that kind of ties into whatever it is that the, they're doing because they don't really have the knowledge, so they'll ask me for my advice on it you mentioned something about if if somebody's doing let's say they're investigating cryptids versus you know Mm -hmm. ghost what do they call you do they do they ask you what if they're in the right area what is it that they they want to try to get feedback from you on um well an example would be um they were looking for a creature and they had encountered uh, natives. They were talking to natives about some uh, spirits that had something to do with that creature. Oh. And basically, they were asking me things like, um, 
if they were to use an would it be able to pick up um, heat signatures like oh. it picks up cold signatures things like that and it's like okay. well yeah yeah it's gonna right it's gonna give off body heat right and so because for one there was like supposedly evil to this particular creature or something like that and so uh, they're you know they don't know how to look for ghosts or spirits or anything so they right 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 sure called me up asking me what what should they be looking for you know that type of thing right are we talking something that's so solid or am I wasting my time with equipment because it's not going to register anything Right. What, yeah, they want to know if it's gonna, it would, if it would be something that would show up on an infrared camera. You know, it's like, wow. ah, yeah, it, it would. Um, That's very interesting. Very interesting. I think I, when you said that, I'm thinking along the lines of skinwalk or something that, you know, is like metaphysical, and you're thinking how much of mm -hmm. it is spirit, how much of it is flesh and blood, or mm -hmm. human versus whatever. That's that's that gray area out there. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of theories around all of it. So, sure. Yeah, usually, usually I, I do have my cryptid friends that will reach out and ask for information about paranormal stuff if they're not right that portion of what they're looking into. And how about house blessings, Jen? Do you do anything along those lines where? somebody wants help like hey either I've got weird stuff going on or I'm going to a new place and I just mm -hmm. want to make sure there's nothing there do you do anything I, like I've that? done it before I, I have done it before mm -hmm. um, I haven't recently had anyone ask me to do that but um, I even do my place with regularity okay um, so I mean and I, Sage or Palo Santo, either or. Um, okay. Luckily, luckily for our neighbors here, they don't know that. But <laughs> <laughs> I do the blessing for the whole entire house, so right. they're they're protected as well. Okay. <laughs> and what, let me ask you: Do you do you recommend this, or do you do it what because of uh, spiritual stuff or bad vibes that people bring with them if they come visiting to the house? What is it that you're trying to like? either kick out or hold back I, or whatever. I do it to get rid of any negativity whatsoever. Okay. Um, so, you know, if, if we go somewhere or we come home angry and, you know, negative energy gets, you know, built up from being angry or, or from people visiting, I mean, it could be a collage of things or if, if activity seems to have picked up, I mean, whatever it is, I... Sure. I just try to, as a regular practice, uh, once a month or once every other month, go ahead and just do a quick cleansing because it just seems like it keeps things steady and more peaceful. Right. And that sounds like good advice because I think sometimes people don't realize they always that, that there's just bad vibes out there. I guess if you go out and you're mixed, you know, you're brushing mm -hmm. shoulders with people, you don't you, what you can pick up stuff that's just. Like you said, you come home and all of a sudden the next thing you know, you're arguing and you're mad and you're like, why am I doing this? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, that's a lot of people don't realize that that's, that happens. It doesn't. And I take it that you don't have to necessarily go to a, you know, so-called haunted house or anything. You could, that could happen just about any place you go to. Yeah. Anywhere. And, and I like to go to, uh, flea markets and things like that and you better believe there's stuff in those places antique oh, places yeah. uh i mean so you never know what you're picking up wherever you go so it's it's a good practice to cleanse your home and your and you know what I, I i've i've said it before you know how a lot of people now put that curbside pickup you know they don't even have the garage sale they're just like they're giving stuff away and they'll just put it on the curb and i tell people you gotta sometimes you gotta be careful what you're taking you know off the curb <laughs> You know, it's grandpa's old rocker that he died and grandpa's still sitting in it. And you're yeah. <laughs> taking it with you. Exactly. Exactly. It's like, man, it's in great shape. What a find. It's like, 
<laughs> yeah, wait a couple of weeks. I tell you what, one of those things that freak me out are wardrobes. Really? Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. The that, Yeah, that... Why, did you ever have an experience with that? I never did, but they just... Um, they just freak me out. I mean, <laughs> even when I go um, into these thrift stores or an antique place or... You know, and they have them. I'm just like, ugh. You know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it... To me, it feels like almost like a portal or something. And I know that not all of them are. You know, that's a, right. a notion people get in their heads, you know. But uh, especially from horror movies. But mm-hmm. um, I don't know what it is about it. I just... They creep me out. I've never wanted to have one. Like um, <laughs> I'm like, I will make a makeshift whatever I have to do but I don't want one of those things. Wow. Um. Wardrobes really were brought <laughs> yeah. around when there was no such thing as closets, so it's almost like the equivalent, you know, the closet. And right. the reason why I bring that up is I know there's a lot of people that closets and them are not friends. As In other words, that door better be shut at all times. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's the same, like, um, with basements and attics and things oh, like God. that, too. Let's not go there. I um, tell because, everybody, well, God, the most disturbing well, I mean, things I've you, ever heard of hauntings usually happen attics, but mostly it's basement or cellars or anything that's dug into the earth. I don't know why. Yeah. It's like, well, that's what why. is that? Because it's dug into the earth. That's, that's exactly why. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. If you think about it, you know, how many how many feet under is it going up and down? You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's like I really mean, it, dark stuff, though, that you hear about. It's like, yeah, yeah we got well, regular I mean, ghosts in the rest of the house, but whatever's in the basement is the scary one. <laughs> yeah, that's that true. That is true. I, I've had quite a few experiences with basement. Um, yeah. Even in this house, um, there's a section that everyone's creeped out by, and it has it, it looks a part of the house a really old wooden door that oh, wow. looks like it came off of a barn or something. I mean, it doesn't look like a normal door. Yeah, and um. When you open it up, it's just like an empty space, but um, you can see where they try to ba- build the cement wall to hold up the foundation of the house mm-hmm. so that it, the mud doesn't come through and all that. Anyway, what I was picking up on was the 1920s and back when they were doing bootlegging. Oh, wow. Prohibition times and stuff. Right. And uh, come to find out, well gee, yep, yeah, back in that time frame, that's what was going on around here, so. Oh, they had a lot of bootlegging and stuff? That was yep. a lot of money to be made, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like prohibiting something to have everybody, like, really want to have it. There was a lot of money to yeah. be made, and unfortunately, a lot of crime went along with it as far as, uh, you know, violence and things like that. People don't realize that. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of that, and a lot of that stuff never got documented. What I mean by that is, it, there was no newspaper story, or about the guy that disappeared and nobody ever saw him again, or about the girl, or about the, you know, they're just like, and that that if that can permeate also like an area. But I I totally get where what you're saying as far as um, one time, as a matter of fact, I had a guy who told me, and he said he had, again, it was like a real old house. And um, his grandfather first had bought the house next door and bought that one. And eventually him and his, you know, his parents moved in. And he kept seeing stuff in the basement. But they had, like, you know, finished it out, like, nicely. So, like, and they told the teenagers of the family, hey, you guys are going to hang out. That's your hangout place. And he says he would always see shadows back and forth. But him and his friends, they're a bunch of teenage boys. So they're, like, not really paying attention. Paying attention, but not really. And he says that one day... Mm -hmm. Him and one other friend are there watching TV, and all of a sudden he says, out of nowhere, he sees this guy walk by like in an old-fashioned suit, and then walk down a hallway, which he knows ended like there was no door. It kind of like ended in a wall. And he says he looked at his friend, and his friend looked at him, hmm. and he goes, did you see that? Yeah, did that? And he says they both ran there like, okay. And of course, there was nothing there. So he says the next day, he tells his mom, hey, mom, you know, and she goes, well, I guess, well, what the truth is that the guy that had this house before we, you know, grandpa bought it, apparently there was a trap door where they would put coal down into the basement area. 
And one day he came home, and I don't know whether he forgot he was drunk, but anyway, bottom line, he fell through that door and died. I guess he somehow, the way he landed, he died. And it was around, I want to say it was maybe the 1930s or 40s, according to her. And he says that that's kind of what his suit looked like, like at that old fashioned. He says that what was really surprising is that after that one time that they both, him and his friend, saw the sky, uh, they never mm-hmm. saw the shadows again. Um, so, hmm. like I said, there's always something, even if you redo basements or whatever, there's just something that goes on with these places that manifestations always seem to end up there yeah but yeah I, 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 I've heard that uh, and and a lot of you know stuff that's even non-human but anyway Jen thank you so so much for spending this time with me tonight it has been fantastic uh, again I'm going to include a link to your website but for the audience that's listening to this on podcast what's your website address again Sure, it's jenaya.com, and my last name is spelled D-E-V is in victory, I-L-L-I-E-R. Right, and that's Jen, G-E-N, right? Actually, it's J-E-N. J-E-N, okay. Mm-hmm. All, right. All right, so if anybody wants to get a hold of you then for a reading or anything like that, that's where they should go to then? Yes. Perfect, perfect. All right, it has been a total pleasure to talk to you. And I, are you are you going to be working on any new books, any new projects coming up? Um, I actually have started a second book, um, okay. and it's going to be with one of my colleagues, uh, Mr. Ron Murphy, who's written several books on his own. Okay. Um, I wrote work for his book called On Vampires. Ooh. So that's a mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and I I do have content in another book called Demons, the Devil, and Fallen Angels, which was written by Marie D. Jones and Larry Flaxman. Yes, I've spoken. I've interviewed Marie. I've interviewed Marie. Yeah. Okay. They, so they reached out and asked me if I would uh, do a little content for them, and I said absolutely. So I've got a little bit in there. Um, okay. I'm, I'm working my way. Around. I know, I know, and I believe me, people, uh, I understand that sometimes, what's that saying, life gets in the way, that it just escapes you as far as finding the time sometimes for even the most well-loved projects, it's, it consumes your time. Yes. It does, it consumes Absolutely. your time. Absolutely, it what. really does. But anyway, I want to wish you the best of luck on that project, and I hope you'll come back and we can talk about it once you get it out absolutely there. I, I would absolutely love to and it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you okay darling take care all right you too take care bye bye so wasn't that interesting that girl I, I wish I had more time you know uh, we'll bring her back and ask her about all those other things because obviously she grew up with the paranormal, truly with the paranormal. And it's really funny because, you know, I've had guests where, you know, as kids they've had something happen, they see something, whatever, and the parents are like, no, there's nothing, it's your imagination, let's not talk about it. Shh. And here, you know, she had a mom that was getting tarot readings. And even though, and it sounds like her mom was sensitive herself, but like I say, a lot of parents are afraid that if they really start talking to... And in a way, I understand because you want to protect your kids, like, you know, <clears throat> minimize it until you, they get older because you're afraid, you know, what if my kid... I freak out my kid. But anyway, <clears throat> and then I wanted to... Ex- excuse me, everybody, with my voice went, but I've been fighting an allergy attack all day. And... Um, but anyway, um, so she does everything. She does... I mean, she's psychic. She does the tarot. She does the astrology charts. Um, you know, she does... And she's well acquainted with the paranormal. Okay, which is really, really important. Uh, because sometimes... I imagine... Uh, people... You know, I, and I, you know, I understand where people will... Let's say go to an astrologer or for a tarot reading. For what you think of the most basic. You know, 
love life or my business or my job or like she said where am I going but what if you uh, have something more funky going on what if you think that you might be cursed or hey I think I've got like that lady I've got all these things going on around and to me why is that okay sometimes it's good to have somebody who's well-rounded in all these aspects that they're ready to to whatever whether it's a tarot or a tarot reading or whether it's they've drawn your astrological chart that they could tell you what well, you know what first of all I'm not gonna blink twice when you ask me what you ask because I get it I know where you're going and I know I understand what you want to know and this is what it is okay because sometimes things that happen to us on the physical plane are definitely influenced by things on the metaphysical plane and I really like something she stressed more than once and I'm sure you guys heard it which is I draw certain things to me so in other words Jen is very 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 aware of that like attract like that I've mentioned before various times which is you what you put out and by this what I mean put out I'm not saying a fleeting thought I'm talking about something you either think about a lot or feel because of course for you to feel something it's got to start with what you think you know that this is eventually what you manifest in the physical plane and this is what you attract to you whether it's the person or the circumstances that are going to fit into this vibe or this expectation that you're putting out. And again, you're not supposed to be walking around going, ha ha, everything is wonderful. You know, it's like Pollyanna. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where you obsessively start thinking about it or doing it and thinking, 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 and worst case scenario where that this bad thing's going to happen or um, if you're having problems with somebody else, let's say a coworker or a spouse or a boyfriend or a girl, and you're just like shadow boxing <clears throat> on an all worst case scenarios of which way this could go, there's got to be a point where you gotta stop yourself. Even if you have to like stop yourself consciously and say, I'm not going to think about it. And do just like what you do with a little kid. You know when a little kid is like all like wants that, 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 and you distract them and you like try to get their attention away from it. That's almost what you gotta do to yourself. Like distract yourself, like what am I gonna eat for lunch? whatever and you have to consciously do this for a while because what happens is that when sometimes when we get fixated on a certain track of thinking which inevitably leads to feeling besides the fact that sometimes negative emotions are very pulling they're like a magnet besides making you feel bad while you're thinking or angry sometimes basically what you're doing is in the background you're going to bring it into being or pull it or something that's already in existence you will pull it to cross paths with you again it could be the person persons circumstances uh, because you just you're just saying I want it you know uh, I'm thinking about this so hard I I, I, I want to see or experience or whatever it is so I'm glad she pointed that out that she sounds like she's really on top of how the metaphysical works she understands that whether it was the Ouija board or she's doing tarot readings or whatever it is she is putting out this if it's negative it's that's not what I want I'm I'm you know I'm not that's not that's not for me I'm not gonna engage it I'm not gonna ask for it I'm not gonna pull it in and did you hear what she said about yeah, she cleanses, sages her house, whatever, uh, once a month or once every month, every other month. And I totally agree, and I've mentioned it. I, I've told people I, I would never, I would never move into a new place unless I did that. And I don't care how brand new or freshly painted or clean it looks, because this does not have to do with material cleanse. It has to do with a physical. And, chances are you have no way of knowing what went on there it doesn't have to be anything that makes the papers but if you had people that were arguing a lot or dysfunction or unhappiness or 
and it was repetitive, I'm not talking once or twice, something that was really, that imprints itself on the fabric of that place on a metaphysical plane. And whoever walks in there lives there after a while, depending on how rich, because, and that's another thing, people don't realize that, especially when you get a place that's been around for a little bit, it's almost like layer upon layer of where whatever went on there. Let's let's go with arguments. You know, maybe originally you had two people living together who were really unhappy with each other, with life, whatever. They did a lot of arguing, a lot of arguing, a lot of unhappiness, bitterness, the whole... And let's say this couple was there 10 years, 20 years, whatever, a few years, whether they died there or they moved away. And next set of people up, all of a sudden, they're a couple. And maybe they never had major problems. And next thing you know, they're having all these fights and snapping and wigging out. And, you know, all of a sudden, instead of having just a little argument, they're having a full-fledged... Okay, sometimes even breaking up a relationship. And if they're long enough, they're, they add another layer, and then another layer comes from maybe somebody comes after them, which has no idea of why maybe their relationship all of a sudden takes a left turn. Like, what happened? Or even among the family members, it doesn't have to be a couple. Sometimes it can even, the dynamics between not only the, the couple, but if you have children, children and their parents, uh anybody else that's living there all of a sudden it's like hey an okay relationship whatever it was goes off the deep end and some people every once in a while you'll get somebody that will catch on and say man you know what everything went really bad after we moved to this place Mm, sometimes a lot of times unfortunately nobody catches on and either people break up whatever the case might be or sometimes almost irreparable damage is done to a relationship and people are none the wiser really what's going on and then you might down the road get another set of perfect people and there you've got maybe 20, 30, 40 years worth worth of dysfunction bitterness, unhappiness and all it is that there's no haunting per se it's just uh, just like she said, the residual, well, it's the residual of emotions, that negative emotions that become imprinted there. And people come and go, and sometimes they are none the wiser why they become unhappy and, or they just their life falls apart or things like that. Because as the years go by, of course, this layer, it's amplified and that happens more often than you think and so I'm glad she made that point about cleansing your house because and that's another thing like she said you know when you go to the flea market and, it, and sometimes you'll even have somebody come to your house whether it's a friend or just somebody visiting that they bring somebody something with them bad vibes you you I tell them you, you know you could look at somebody which who you do not know who they are and they look like they are the most carefree person in the world or you may think oh they have nothing to worry about they've got a great job or they've got a great marriage and no money problems so that person is you never know what's going on behind the scenes in that person's life uh, they might be in a depressed state they might have really horrible things going on that nobody knows about uh, and they're carrying this negativity around with them. And the next thing you know, they visit, they spend the day. Next thing you know, you're like, oh man, I was happy. And now I feel like I want to just sit down and cry. Why? Not all the time, but sometimes that's an explanation. So, I think it's good advice that she gave. Okay, I think that's very good advice that she gave. As far as just to banish negativity. Okay, negativity, nastiness, and just welcome in light and love. I mean, like I said, nobody leads a perfect life, and you're always going to have 
just uh, things that happen. But, God, it makes a big difference what your mindset is to deal with problems as they come along versus, yeah, I was happy till I moved here. And, by the way, a lot of people, let's say, if they go house hunting or apartment hunting or whatever the case, and you'll have some people say, oh, you know, I went to this place and I just didn't like it. Or it looked really dark to me. As in, not because of the lighting. Just, there's something dark about it. A lot of people think, oh, it's haunted. No. It could be haunted, but not the way you think of as in haunting, like by a ghost or an intelligent entity. It could be haunted in the sense of what you're feeling. Either very uneasy, or man, I want to bolt for the door. I want to leave. Uh, even if that's not the house, maybe a particular room. Is because basically what you're feeling is maybe years of some type of very negative human emotion that was repeated over and over in some version for years sometimes. And it, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't necessarily have to be, oh, you're going to see a ghost. No. If you had a large amount of dysfunction for many years in a house whether it was one family or several families, let me tell you, you don't have to be that sensitive to feel that way. And a lot of people, if they're honest, will tell you that somewhere along the line they've had that experience. Sometimes you even have it, you go visit some place you've never been to. Let's say, oh man, I, didn't, I just didn't like that place. I went in there and I just felt uncomfortable. And there's no physical sign for it as to why you would feel that way, but you can't help it. But a lot of people, they just dismiss it as like, it's my imagination. But sometimes it's not. But anyway, guys, I hope you like the show. I really enjoyed speaking to Jen. Her website address, her current website address is going to be a link on the show. Uh, again, if you uh, if you guys have any suggestions for guests or topics, please let me know at marlene at mymigoschronicles.com. If you have a story that you'd like to share with me, you can go to that MiamiGhostChronicles.com Submit your story tab uh, Look me up Facebook, Twitter, Instagram This is where I live stream I also talk about upcoming guests I also, that's where I usually If I have some merch giveaways As far as things that I give away For people uh, Some of the, my, my members On YouTube or on Social media I have neat little stuff like right now, which by the way, you've got, by the time you guys hear it, it'll be over. Um, I've got a collector's model of Daryl Dixon from The Walking Dead. Um, that's my giveaway. I usually have it for three, four, five days the most. Uh, free, free. So anyway, if you go and you hook up with me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that's usually where I put out notices when I'm having those, um, you know, those giveaways, that merchandise giveaway and again also I put out information about new and upcoming guests which again I have a lot of interesting guests coming up uh, I've had a lot of requests to do some storytelling as in oh tell us about certain places and ghost stories or urban myths or whatever about certain places so I'm gonna be trying to put something I, there's one that I have coming out now like I said before in Matter of fact, for Halloween, I did it just for on St. Augustine. So there's a lot of interesting stuff that went on there. So again, guys, thank you so very much for being part of my audience. I truly appreciate the time that we spent together. And I look forward to the next time that you guys stop by and you listen or see uh, what's, what's new in the paranormal world. Take care.